If you drive like this on your driving test, you are going to pass first time and that's it. Now the route we're going to do is a real driving test route here in Stafford. I'm going to show you all the way from the driving test center. I'm going to talk about all the dangerous areas and the mistakes that people generally make when they're on a driving test and how to avoid them. Let's go. Okay, we are driving from the test center now. As we leave the car park, the first thing people tend to do when they fail a driving test is they forget to look left and right here. It doesn't look like a very busy junction, but it is still a junction. So you need to make sure you look both ways. Very, very fast way to fail your driving test. And this happens at all sorts of driving test centers, not just Stafford. The next thing we have is a junction here. We're always gonna be turning left here because that's a dead end. Now during this driving test, I intentionally made two mistakes throughout the test. Let's see if you can spot where they are and put them in the comments below. Where do you think I made the mistakes? Let me know. So I'm gonna take the next route on the right. So I'm checking my central and my right mirror and then I'm popping a signal on. I'm going a nice jogging pace, just looking. It's nice and clear ahead. So I'm not stopping. I'm carrying on. That keeps the flow of traffic. Okay, this is a terrible meeting traffic road down here. All you gotta do is take your time uh, as you can see here, I've adjusted to let this car come through. It's looking fairly clear ahead, so I'm carrying on. I'm planning to take the next road on the left, so I'm gonna check the mirrors and I'm just gonna communicate that with a cheeky signal. Now he's turning as well, but it is my priority, so I'm going first. Now I go to the end of the road, I check my mirrors, I pop a signal on. And I'm just looking to the right now, I'm waiting for a gap. I know there's traffic lights there. I'm on a bit of a hill. I've got an automatic handbrake, so I'll put my parking brake on. If you're on a hill, use your handbrake. That's what it's for, it's for hill starts. As I say, I'm waiting really patiently. I'm, oh, they're stopping for the traffic lights, so I'm carrying on. There's no point getting excited. There's no point trying to take cheeky gaps um, because you're just asking for trouble. Now I need to change lanes, so I've checked my mirrors and I checked my blind spot as well as signaling that time. I look at the road markings. I know I need to go straight on at this roundabout second exit. So I'm looking for the arrow on the road, which says following the road ahead. I'm back into second gear and I'm looking if it's clear. It is clear. So I'm carrying on. I'm checking my mirrors again and my blind spot before signaling nice and early to let this guy here know that I'm going down here so he can pull out on the roundabout. All right, I'm following the road ahead. I'm ignoring the van. I'm ignoring other people because I know it's my priority. He knows it's his my priority. Uh, so all I've got to do is just stick to the rules of the road. Now, all I'm doing down here is I'm just following the speed limit uh, and I'm just following them to the end of the road. If I don't know the speed limit, I'm guessing using the street lights. Street lights are there, 30 miles per hour. It's always going to happen unless you see speed signs saying otherwise you aren't going to fail if you go less than the speed limit, um, or you're a lot less likely to uh, for a little while, compared to if you go over the speed limit. So on busy roads like this, the examiner's probably going to ask you to pull over, okay? Uh, so behind this car, I'm gonna pull over, check my mirrors, pop the signal on, and I'm just gently pulling up behind this car, staying reasonably close to the curb. And again, I wanna leave a little bit of space behind this car. On your driving test, they're also gonna probably ask you to do an angled start, and that's when you pull up behind a parked vehicle, around a car's length away, and then they're gonna ask you to drive away when it's safe to do so. And they just wanna see that you can get out safely without pulling out on traffic and without taking the corner off the car. So that's what we're going to do. So we're waiting patiently. You can see in our mirror, we've got this truck coming. So I'm just waiting nice and patiently. I'm not even signaling because I don't wanna confuse the cars and make them think, think I'm pulling out on them, because I'm not. Okay, the lights have changed. So all the cars there have stopped. So I pop my signal on and I've come out. Now there's a lady in the road here. So I'm, I am just gonna stop. I'm gonna let it go because she's actually on the road. And if there's a pedestrian on the road, who has priority? Always the pedestrian. Of course, you wouldn't wanna slam your brake on so hard that you're risking a car behind you. So you've got to be aware of that. It's a really sticky rule, that one. Uh, it's just, you have gotta use common sense at the time every situation is different. Still sticking to the 30 mile per hour speed limit that I'm assuming because I haven't seen a sign anywhere. Keeping an eye on that central mirror the whole time. Okay, what have we seen here? We've got 40 mile per hour speed limit. So I can now increase my speed a little bit. The lights are red, so I'm not gonna get excited. I'm slowing down, checking the mirrors. I've gone into first gear and I'm just gently rolling behind this car. 
Okay, we're speeding back up. We're keeping them with the flow of traffic. That's what's really important here. Keeping with the flow of traffic. Just don't be a stone in the road, basically. Don't try and go extra slow. Be extra cautious compared to everyone else because all you're actually doing is being a pain in the backside. You're not keeping the flow, you're slowing people down, which is going to introduce risk. Of course, stick to the speed limit. Okay, at the roundabout, the examiner's gonna ask me to turn left towards the M6 here. So I'm checking those mirrors, I'm popping that signal on. I've got plenty of time to get there. So I'm going into second gear nice and early. Get, that, get to that jogging speed at roundabout. It's gonna give me loads of time to look now, loads of time to look and then decide if it's safe to go or not. The faster you go into the roundabout, the harder it is to actually judge. So always go jogging speed, ideally second gear. Again, another roundabout, we're following the road ahead, first exit, it's nice and clear. I'm staying in that second for a few, for a little while. Okay, no speed signs here. So, oh, there's a speed sign there, 50. So we're gonna now put our foot down, we're gonna get our speed up and build up to that 50 miles per hour. There's always someone that wants to go faster and that's okay, as long as they don't affect me. I'm not a policeman, uh, I'm just another driver on the road. All right, signs, we've seen signs. Signs are really important. They are going to help you so much. They're gonna what's gonna give you confidence and not um, make you panic because you're gonna be aware of what's coming up. And we saw the sign for the roundabout and there's a 30 sign there. So we check our mirrors, we're going first exit at the roundabout. We pop our signal on. Um, I'm in fifth gear and I'm dropping it straight down to second because I'm, I'm down to 25 miles an hour anyway. And there's nothing wrong with block changing, nothing wrong at all. In fact, it saves a lot of time and hassle. So why wouldn't you? We saw the 30 sign, so we're assuming this road is a 30 all the way. Um, the examiner's asked us to turn left here, so we're gonna check our mirrors. We're popping that signal on, and again, we're getting to that jogging speed before the junction. Jogging speed for any time there's a junction, roundabout, anything like that, and you're not gonna go wrong. Um, it's all about the speed. It's all in the hips. Okay, so, central mirror, right mirror, we're planning to turn right here, because the examiner has got planned that we're gonna be doing a parallel park, the cheeky monkey. So yeah, we're hugging the white line, lining up the mirror with the white line and we're turning. Okay, unfortunately for the examiner, there is no car to do a parallel park with. So, we're not doing a parallel park. So we're carrying on to the end of the road and we're gonna be turning right. So I'm checking central, right mirror, popping Signoli, braking a tiny bit, jogging speed. And we're going straight into first gear, looking both ways, there's a car there. There's also another car coming, so I'm not gonna get excited. I'm just gonna wait. Turn the wheel ever so slightly. Locking space after the car, yes. So I'm starting to move as the car goes by because I've already decided that there's space. Okay, we've got some bumps here. When you're going over bumps, there's not one size fits all. Go over the bump. If you feel like you've gone too fast, slow down for the next one. If you think it's safe to go a little bit quicker, go a little bit quicker. Bumps aren't always designed to encourage people to go five miles an hour. Sometimes they're just designed to encourage people to stay below 30 miles per hour, you know? Because they, they deem it's really, really important on a road and it's extra hazardous. And rather than putting cameras, they're putting bumps on. Important point is, there's not a one size fits all. Some bumps, you can't go any faster than five to 10 miles an hour. Other bumps, you can go at 20 to 25 miles per hour. Okay, after this Range Rover, loads of space. So I'm starting to move as he goes past really gently. I'm just getting my feet ready as he goes past, really. I'm checking my mirror and I'm getting up to speed. Keep with the flow of traffic. There's nothing special about me. I'm a normal person. I belong on this road. I get up to speed. I'm just one with the flow. All I'm doing now is I'm going to the end of the road. I'm gonna turn the heating down a little bit. Really boring road this, really boring and straight. So what, you know, are you gonna be expected to do? Not a lot, but it's still good to be aware. Know what's behind you, looking behind you. Every so often, you don't even have to move your head, you're just literally flicking your eyes and being aware. If you don't wanna crash your car, all you have to do is be aware. It's just literally looking in your mirrors. Your mirrors are for you, they're your selfish tool to stop you crashing your car. Because if you know something's there, are you going to crash into it? 
No, of course not. Your indicators are your helpful tool to others. They're for other people. Let them know what we're doing and then they can move on themselves. Okay, good. We've gone round the parked cars. We're staying a door's width from the parked cars. Lots of space. Doesn't matter if I'm slightly over the line because they've got loads of space there as well. Another parked car. Just checking my mirrors and I'm moving out slightly, staying a door's width. If you can stay a door's width, you should be fine doing the 30 mile per hour speed limit in most cases if it's safe to do 30 on a road. If you're less than a door's width, you're probably going to want to half the speed down to about 15, depending on how close you get. You might need to get down to 5 or 10, again, if you're getting really, really close. At this roundabout, it's a weird one. It counts as straight on for both lanes when it's actually, so you can use both lanes to turn right, essentially. This person's just pulled out on me. Bless their cotton socks, but that's okay. So we're staying right by the curb all the way around the outside here, and we're popping that left signal on to let these people know I'm coming off, and then they can carry on going. Now we're going through town here. There's two lanes here. Anytime there is ever two lanes on your truck, well, anytime there's ever two lanes, the right lane is for turning right and overtaking. If I am not turning right and I'm not overtaking, I should always be in the left lane. And if you end up sitting in the right lane, um, and another car starts undertaking you, that's on you, that's your fault, because you've chosen to sit in the overtaking lane, which is going to seriously negatively impact your driving test. So all we're gonna be doing now is we're just following the road ahead all the way to the roundabout. Anytime there's multiple lanes, if I'm in the left lane, I'll always use the curb to try and guide myself, not the inside line, because that's shared space. Why do I want to be in the shared space when I've got this free space up to the curb? You know, if there's a lorry or something a bit bigger than me, they're going to need that shared space when I don't. Not important, but there is a junction here. So if there is a car coming out, I don't want to be that mean guy and block them in when there's no need. I don't need to worry about it too much because the important point is no one can turn into the junction. I'm always staying a two second gap from the vehicle in front. In fact, I'm giving this person in front quite a bit of space. Does it do any harm? No, I'm keeping up with the flow of traffic. It's not like I'm falling miles behind or anything. I'm keeping up with the flow. I'm just giving them space. On this roundabout, we're going for A34. Now, both lanes go to A34. And this is quite a tough roundabout if you're in Stafford, just because you have to keep to the very outside of the roundabout. Just like this person in front. And it's very easy to cut across lanes. So all I'm using is I'm using the outside line here of the roundabout and just hugging the outside. If I hug the outside, I can't go wrong because that's all my space. There's no one else going to be on the outside. Whereas if I accidentally cut across this way, well, what's there? That's where all the cars are. So if you're in the outside of a roundabout, just remember, use the outside of the roundabout and you can't go wrong. Okay, I am going to overtake this car in a minute because they're in one of the first lessons. Um, not realistic for our test route to continue following at 10 miles an hour. Okay, they've sped up a little bit, so it's not too bad. All right, traffic lights, they've gone green. We've adjusted nicely so we didn't have to stop. Your other aim for when you drive is to never have to stop. Obviously, you never go through a red light or anything illegal, but if you can slow down earlier so you don't have to stop, it's always gonna be beneficial. You know, what's easier, rolling in second or going into first and then having to get your bike and everything again? It just doesn't make sense, and it uses more fuel. And fuel is money, baby. Okay, 40 mile per hour. So all we're doing is, again, we're keeping up with the flow of traffic, staying at 40 miles per hour. I know at this roundabout that we're going left towards Utoxeter. So I'm staying in the left lane. We've seen some really important signs there, 30 mile per hour zone, so I'm dropping it into, dropping into third, and I'm yeah, sticking it 30 miles per hour. Again, trying to give this person in front plenty of space at all times. Traffic light pedestrian crossing, don't need to worry because not gonna change unless some, there's some pedestrians looking ahead, seeing the red lights, so we're slowing down, trying to adjust again in second gear, and because I've adjusted nicely, I haven't had to stop. And that is what we're aiming for. Okay, we're looking ahead, and we can see there's some parked cars on the left here. So we're aiming to keep that door's width if there's space with the cars on the right. It's very busy, so we're going extra slow. And yeah, we're not staring at the cars on the right because that's going to encourage us to move over to the left. And as I always say to my students, which ones are going to dodge you? The parked cars or the moving cars? The moving cars are the ones that's going to dodge you. So don't stare at them. Worry about not hitting the parked car. There we go. So we're around a door's width. So we were okay doing about 20 there. Still a 30 zone. So we're carrying on. So you might notice my car's a little bit noisier than what you're used to, and that's because it's a diesel. 
and uh, diesel cars, especially this one, is just a little bit more rumbly. Also likes a slightly, likes to stay in gear a little bit longer. So yeah, can stay in first gear up to about 15 in this car, second gear up to about 25. Looking at the roundabout, we've dropped it into second gear. We're looking for a space. We're not stopping if we can help it. We keep rolling and we've made it. Okay, looking at, we've spotted the speed sign, really important, 40 mile per hour road. That's the only sign you're going to see that this is a 40. So if you miss that, you're probably gonna assume it's a 30. If you do assume it's a 30 and you slow people down behind you, it's not, not the end of the world, is it? I mean, it's 25% less. Um, shouldn't be the end of the world. So you, you might end up with a fault and hopefully by the time you see the next sign, as long as you don't miss the next sign, you'll get up to speed. Oh, and the lights have gone red. When it comes to traffic lights, the examiner is going to think to themselves, could you have safely stopped before the light went red? Okay, if the answer is yes, then you should do. If the answer is no, you know, if it's, if it's the front wheels are almost going over, it's going amber, and you carry on. Uh, lots of people might say weight in neutral, um, handbrake. Am I on a hill? No. So is there any benefit to the handbrake? No, it's just gonna take me longer to get off. Any benefit to neutral? No, no benefit at all. Again, I'm the front car, it's just gonna take me longer to faff and get the bite and everything else. So it's a complete waste of time. You wouldn't be marked down on your driving test. I don't advise it. But that is, if you're driving instructor test, there's nothing wrong with that. You go with what you feel is right. Okay, 50 signs, very important that we don't miss that one. Okay, so I'm in fourth gear, I'm speeding up now. We're up 45, getting to 50. It's nice, clear, open road. So is it safe to do 50? At the moment, I'd say yes it is. How you hold the wheel is an interesting topic. I like this one, how you hold the wheel. It doesn't really matter. I let students hold the wheel however they want, so as long as they've got two hands on the wheel, which but yeah, as long as, hold the wheel however you like, however you feel comfortable. As long as you have full control of the car at all times, it doesn't matter. Okay, traffic lights, we're following the road ahead all the way. So all I'm looking for here is road marking. So if I look at the two lanes, the left lane has road markings for following the road ahead. So that's my lane. Okay, we're continuing to follow the road ahead. So we need to look for road markings. And I know the road markings here for straight on are in the right lane. So I've checked my mirrors and I'm just moving across. And it's safe to do that because there's no one behind me and that lane is a single lane that goes into two. So does it help if I signal? Does it matter to anyone? Not really. Does it matter if I don't signal? Not really. Again, I've left a tiny bit of space here. Does it affect anyone? Does it matter in any way, shape or form? No, it's not gonna be any benefit at all. It just means if this guy rolls back in front of me, I don't need to panic. He's got a bit of room. I can press the horn if I need to. Lights are changing. I'm checking my mirrors and I'm moving off. Loads of potholes, so I'm touching all those. Okay, he's building some speed up now, back up to that 50 mark. So I'm also building the speed up to keep the flow of traffic. Don't slow people down. Obviously, whenever I say this, I always mean stay within the speed limit. Don't do anything stupid or dangerous, but keep the flow of traffic. If you haven't yet, have a look at my online driving course. Cost less than one driving lesson, links there or there. It's got everything you need from A to Z for passing your driving test. Okay, so at the moment, we've got loads of roadworks here. So this is where people can go a little bit wrong. This is, this is just pure clutch control. It's up and down on your clutch, up and down, up and down. That's all you've got to do, up and down with that clutch. You shouldn't need to be braking really in traffic driving at all. Um, not unless it's coming to a full stop anyway. And even then you should be able to roll to the stop and then secure the car with a brake. Just up and down. So if I, get close, if I get within a car's length at this speed, I'm going to keep my clutch down and just coast that car's length because it doesn't matter when you're going this slow. It's not going to be dangerous. Coasting's dangerous when you're going fast, you know? 10 miles an hour and above, that's when it's, going, it's considered dangerous coasting, lack of control. But yeah, so I'm looking ahead. I can see all the traffic at the end, so is there any point in me rushing behind this car, you know? Is it gonna go anywhere anytime soon? No, no chance at all. So I'm just really taking my time, going nice and slow. And there you go, he's coming to a full stop there. So I'm just gonna leave a bit of space and also stop. Now this situation, I may very well go into neutral um, and make sure the handbrake's secured because what's the point? I'm not going anywhere. I can see the traffic moving at the end. When the traffic moves, that's when I'll go back. But if I'm not waiting for ages, there's no point. All right, it's starting to move. Check the mirrors, back in gear, and off we go. 
When I change gear, you'll notice I use the side of my hand. I use the palm of my hand generally. Um, and that's because you are far less likely to go into the wrong gear. You know, you'll never go accidentally into first gear instead of third gear. I'll never accidentally go into fourth gear because you're using, the, you're using your whole arm instead of your wrist. And you've got to think which is stronger, your wrist or your arm. It's always going to be your arm. Okay, road work lights. Keeping up with the flow of traffic when they're green. No one wants to wait behind the green light while you're dawdling along. Try and keep up. Obviously not racing. We're not suggesting anything dangerous. We're just saying keep the flow of traffic. All you've got to think when you're learning to drive is, well, not being a learner. Stop driving like a learner. Try and drive like a normal person on the road like you belong, like you're flowing with the, the other cars and you'll be absolutely fine. They don't want to see you driving like this special case that shouldn't be on the roads, you know? You're normal like everyone else. Lights have changed, so I've got myself, got my car ready. The second they start moving, I'm getting the bikes again. I'm constantly having a look in the mirrors, just have an idea of what's going on. Really taking my time, trying to leave a bit of space so I can see further down the road. The further I am from the car in front, the more, the more space I have, I can see out the windscreen, the more I can see ahead. And the more I can see ahead, the more I can prepare and know what's going on. It's a bit like a game of chess. I can prepare more moves ahead, the further down the road I can see. At the roundabout, we're gonna be following signs for Stafford, so it's gonna be first exit. Now this is my priority, so I'm not stopping for this car here. I'm checking my mirrors, I'm popping that signal on. Does it matter how early I signal? Well, there's no previous junction, so not at all. And what signs have we speed? Speed. What signs have we seen? What speed sign? What's the speed here? 40 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour. So the signs are always at the beginning of the road. That doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get any more, uh, especially if it's a 30 road. You won't see another sign. Now there is a repeater. Normally 40s and 50s do have repeaters like this one. Dual carriageway as well, two lanes. Um, left lane for, uh, for normal driving, right lane for overtaking. It's now merging into one and we've got two 30 mile per hour. Speed signs showing a new zone. A new zone is where you get a sign on both sides and that's showing that this zone is now 30 miles per hour. You're never going to have a new zone sign if it's already 30 miles per hour. That would be what you call a repeater, which is a small sign on the left side on one of the street lights. More traffic lights, so I'm slowing down nice and early because what do we want to do? starting to get this we want those lights to change before we get there they're not going to in this case but that's okay it also means the car behind me who's having a chat with the girlfriend is far less likely to lose attention and go into the back of me because i showed him my brake lights nice and early okay we're approaching a roundabout we're going to be following the road ahead now straight after this roundabout the examiner is going to ask me to turn right. And there's two lanes that approach the roundabout and two lanes that exit the roundabout. So I might as well use the right lane in order to enter the roundabout so I don't have to then change lanes after the roundabout, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean in a second if it doesn't. So second gear still, we're checking mirrors, but we're not actually signaling because our lack of signal shows we're following the road ahead. Looking for space, it's safe to go. I'm popping a signal now to show I'm coming off so these cars can enter the roundabout without thinking I'm carrying on round. I'm turning the signal off and then I'm signaling right because we need to turn right to go back to the test centre because we're coming to the end of our driving test. Have we got space to go? No, I'm not going to risk it. It's just, there's no point. What's the point? I need to pass my driving test. If I want to pass my driving test, do I take risks? No, I have got nowhere to be in a rush apart from out to celebrate my newfound freedom. Okay, we've checked those mirrors. We're in second gear. We're going into third, because it's nice and clear. We're following the road ahead. On jogging speed, second gear with the clutch back up. Gives us lots of control. And we are home sweet home. And that's it. We're back. Okay, so I know I made at least two mistakes in that driving test. Can you let me know in the comments below where you think they are? What do you think I did wrong? If you are preparing for your driving test, I have an online driving course that is made just for you. It is just in the link there or in the description below. It costs less than one driving lesson. It's a no brainer. Have a look. If you're looking for some examiner tips, have a look at this video right here and I'll see you soon.